sure to smash that subscribe button for more awesome whispered content. And if you want to support the channel in a different way, you can press the join button beside the subscribe button where you can join my channel via channel member. The link is also in the description where you can get exclusive badges depending on how long you've been a channel member. A month, two months, three months. I'm not sure exactly the, the intervals, but certain intervals and you get different colored pandas beside your username in the comments and stuff, I believe. Um, I'm not sure because I don't have any channel members yet. Um, emojis, exclusive emojis, a uh, shout out at the end of the videos, and two exclusive videos per month. If you want to support me in a different way but don't want to buy a channel membership, you can buy me coffee and the link is also in the description. So, yeah. I'm back. It's a bit of a light day. I mean, it's cold. It's getting colder for sure. But for some reason, there's a lot of sunlight today inside and stuff. And I do the film per usual now. But I used to, when I film my videos, not have to have the light on at all. But now these days, I always switch the light on. Even today when it's quite light. But yeah, I totally managed to use my uh, black jumper on top. Because other times when it was dark, if it gets too dark, it's too late or whatever. Um, even though it's not late... When I do my green screen, it will get confused with the darker of the blue in the blue screen, green screen, whatever. It's a blue sheet, but... Um, and... Yeah. It's weird people all say green screen, but you can use other things like a blue sheet to do it. Um, it's just important not to wear the colours on the blue screen. Like, don't wear blue. And... I'm also triggered by not wearing green, but I think green is fine because... It's blue, not green. If it was a green screen, you wouldn't wear green, obviously. But, um, yeah, pretty, pretty much. So, I was seeing a bit of light and I was like, what's that? And it's the postman. Never thought of someone going back. But yeah, I'm, I'm alone. Alone, uh, no. I'm getting some videos done when I'm out to myself. But I thought, oh no, someone's going back. But it doesn't really matter. But yeah. sure if he actually stopped here, but yeah, for a second I thought someone was coming in, but no, it's just like some noise in the car, but yeah, today I kind of thought I looked for AI different facts, and I've already done the human body facts, one was cultural traditions, I was just going to do facts like usual, but I've got this article, so I don't think it's listed out more in facts, I think it's more like a full-on article, but I'm just going to read the article, if that's okay, but yeah, so the article is from Wanderlush, it's World Rituals Part 1. So it's 60 plus world rituals, festivals, and ceremonies worth traveling for. It's part one. If I haven't seen part two, we'll see. But I won't even get through this one. If it's popular, as per, I'll do more. That's why I usually don't try to film like the subsequent ones until I know if it's popular or not. Or, yeah, but yeah. I have faith that my role plays will still be popular because today is the last day, as I said yesterday. But I don't know when the videos will be uploaded now. But, um,. When I'm filming it today, it's the 30th of November, the last day of Down at Rymo. I've spent a month writing about nine role plays. They're not all like finished. Sometimes when I got a bit stuck or how to end it, I went on to the next one just because I had to get a certain amount of words done a day. I I can see the end inside. I'm a thousand two hundred words off the end. I spent the whole month of November writing role plays. But my first role play that I released a few days ago hasn't done well at all. So just from that I wouldn't do more. But my ear exam one from before it did. And I have, maybe I should have done some medical ones this month, but it's a bit more hard to put together. I just wanted ones that would write easily. But yeah, I have faith. Either way, I probably will film them all anyway, just because, you know, I spent the whole month writing them. I had a few hours or two hours or an hour and a half onto every day of things. And I was get finished like usually I would be done in the evening from editing or whatever earlier in the day. But because I've been doing all this writing or whatever, it added the time onto each day and not just the time of writing. It was also the time of procrastinating the writing and all of that, you know. So I feel like it just added on to at least three hours just from procrastinating the writing. <laughs> but I guess that's not different from general procrastination either way. But yeah, after today, I think I'll take a break for a while, but we'll see. Now that I know they're quite quick when you get down to it, maybe I will write some more role plays. We'll see. I'll probably get through all the ones I've done first, but yeah. So, it's right. It's not this switching topic now. This list isn't for sure, like, a facts list.
that says I, it's the person who wrote the article, of course, not me personally. More, uh, there are a few things I love more than joining in local festivals and celebrations when I travel, whether it be a religious gala, a celebration to mark the change of the season, a right, a uh, right to ward off evil or ritual, to manifest good fortune, and taking part or just observing cultural traditions around the world, can make for an unforgettable travel experience. For this new post, I ended up with more than six travel writers who share their favorite festivals, rituals, and ceremonial ceremonial experiences in their own countries or when traveling abroad. And there's multiple parts to this. So it's not just the person writing the article, it's um, it's a collaboration, I guess, yeah. And as well, you know, when I was saying something about the postman, I kind of just, it's because I heard something, but I didn't know what. They actually came, went up and they came back down and they came in and I thought maybe they'd rent the doorbell, but they didn't. But I guess it's good they left whatever in the, I mean, I would have been there, so it would have been fine. But it, they left it in the porch, um, which looked like packages and the fragile handle care. There's like two of them and I was like, what is this? I think it's because my mom ordered olive oil the other day, but it's funny because I swear it was just the other day, like it was this week and it's only Thursday. I swear she was talking about it, what, yesterday, the day before or something like this, you know? I swear it was yesterday she was talking about it. Like, I really swear it was yesterday, but it could have been the day before, but either way, that's really fast shipping wherever it's coming from. She must have got like next day or really fast shipping, I don't know why, but yeah, pretty much. Um, because it does say, I think it says the company on it, it seems like olive oil, the kind of balls, it seems like it would be olive oil, but yeah, she orders it online sometimes, but yeah, so, um, so incredible cultural sh traditions around the world, part one of the series looks at 16 beautiful, fascinating, oh, only part one, maybe there's 60 between all the parts, 16 beautiful and fascinating cultural traditions around the world, from Bali to Mexico, Finland to Ethiopia. So the first one, and apologies for saying anything wrong as usual in advance. Kanan Sari in ba Kanan Sari in Bali, Indonesia. So um, intricately woven palm fronds, baskets throwing around the streets will be one of the first things you notice upon arrival in Bali. The carefully placed bright green baskets filled with colorful flowers, burning incense, and other scraps of food picked at by the stray animals became a symbol that will forever remind me of the island. Stacked on top of the temples in doorways and graded daily um, for the past 1,000 years, the piece of ancient tradition that has stuck with the Balinese people through time. Can Kenan Sari is rooted in Hindu religion, but for many Balinese I've met it has more to do with the tradition than religion today. Even those who do not follow the Hindu faith still participate in the daily creation of the Kenan. Sari women are responsible for weaving and creating the offerings. And I feel like I'm just at the start of the video and I'm like, already? It's like nearly the time that I thought I'd be, you know, for sure finished all of these if I actually started at 11. I would have finished by like 12, 20, 12, 30, but I think I must have started much later by mistake and took a break between the two of them because, my gosh. Yeah. Um, and even though it's not vowed then to faith, still participate in the daily creation of the can and sari. Um, women are responsible for weaving and creating the offerings and what you use and where everything is placed has significance. For example, red betel nut is included as an offering to Shiva, one of the three main Hindu deities, as a sign of selflessness. Um, coins can be added and even the position of the colored petals in east, west, north, south signifies prayer to different deities. After the careful creation of the offering, it is placed on doorsteps, atop statues, motorbikes, and along the sidewalks. A jepon flower is used to sprinkle water over the top of the basket while a little prayer is spoken. Prayers show gratitude and express the wish for another day of balance and peace in the world. This ritual is a tribute to the balance of positive and negative in the world. The ballet is so fond of Balinese gods of mythology. Baron Rek. Renda and the black checkered colors tied to many statues and temples are also symbols of this balance between good and evil. Aside from simply watching the early morning streets fill up with these beautiful offerings, tourists can help craft them. Strive a couple conversation with your accommodation owner or host. Express interest in wanting to assist with the preparation of the cat and sari, and most will be more than happy to teach you the tradition. So next up is Yi Torch Festival in Yunnan, China. 
so um, high up in the mountains of China and Yunnan province, where most of China's ethnic minorities reside. You'll find the unique torch festival. For three days, torches burn outside your homes and light up the hills. As bearers walk in the surrounding area, the torch festival is celebrated not just by the Naxi ethnic people, but also by the Yi, Bai, Chino, and Lahu. During the festival, people are welcome to dance around the fire to express their wishes and pursue a good harvest year. The Yi ethnic group has worshipped fire for thousands of years. It's pretty cool to experience these ethnic celebrations that are aimed to drive evil out of their villages. Celebrations are held on June 24th or June 25th in the Chinese Lunar Year. A three-day celebration takes place featuring different activities including horse racing, bullfighting, and archery, wrestling, tug-of-war, swim matches, and other forms of entertainment. After the festival, tourists can take a breather and visit some of the off-the-beaten path destinations in China and China's Yunnan province, which is Napa Lake, the old town of Shang Grilla and the White Horse Snow Mountain in Haba Snow Mountain. So, mid summer uh, festival in Finland. I won't say each time I wrote this, but um, you can, I'll leave a link in the description. So, if you want to see more from that author, you'll see underneath each bit who wrote each part. So, Midsummer festivals in Finland, and isn't this what the movie Midsummer, whatever is about, or something? I don't know if it's exactly that. Honestly, do not uh, say me in the comments if it's not. But oh my gosh, whatever that movie was was so freaky, <laughs> and not something I want to be a part of. <laughs> so, Midsummer, I'm talking about that film from 2019, and it's like in. Um, like, where is it set? I think it's in Finland. I always get some of them confused sometimes. No, sorry. Is it Sweden? Oh god, sorry, Sweden. But I think Midsummer's in Sweden too. I'm not sure, but anyway. So, Midsummer is the celebration of summer and light that has a long history. In Finland, it's marked on a Friday, or in practice, the long weekend around it between 20th and 26th of June. The key traditions, um include being close to nature with family and friends, going to a sauna and swimming in the lake or sea, and watching a bonfire. In the past, bonfires were believed to frighten evil spirits and demons away. Dinner is typically barbecue or salmon with dill and new potatoes and fresh strawberries for dessert. On the day before midsummer, ev almost everyone flees from the city to their summer cottages in the countryside. This is not an ideal time to visit Helsinki unless you enjoy an almost desolate capital. However, you still plan to visit some Finland around midsummer and can't find a cottage to escape to. There is a traditional midsummer celebration with a bonfire that tourists can join on Sur uh, Zari Island. So, midsummer is close to summer solstice. The sun doesn't set until closer to midnight, even in the southernmost point of Finland. While in the north part of the country, the sun is up all night. The temperature varies from year to year, but it's important to Finns to be outdoors as much as possible. If you're lucky enough to be invited along, it's a good idea to pack warm clothes and mosquito repellent just in case. Midsummer traditions also include an element of magic. Especially for single ladies, it's believed that if you collect seven wildflowers and place them under your pillow for the night, you'll meet your future husband in your dreams. So, Durga Puja in West ben Bengal, India. Um, yeah, so every year, West Bengal opens its arms to many visitors from around all around the world for its annual festival of Durga Puja, also called uh, Turku Savan. I'm like butchering every pronunciation here, sorry. The festival marks the victory of the goddess Durga in the battle with the deceiving and powerful demon Ma is Shashura. Um, the festival represents the victory of God over evil and is celebrated grandly throughout the state. I look forward to this festival every year as a chance to return to my hometown for a few days, meet my family and old friends, and enjoy those five days without a care in the world, without thinking almost about sleep, we visit pandals and canopies one after the other and stay out of house way past our bedtime. As per the recorded history, the first grand worship of goddess Durga is said to have occurred in the late 1500s when the landlords of the 
Najibur and Malda initiated the first Durga Puja in West Bengal. The credit of the origin of the community Puja goes to the 12 friends of Tibara in Hooghly, West Bengal, who collaborated and collected donations from local residents to arrange the Barrow Yari Puja or the 12th Puja in 1790. The modern Durga Puja has come has become a festival of creativeness. The pandals and the idol have changed into a medium to show creativity, but at the same time preserve our culture and traditions. The festival is not only about the rituals, but also about its people. The only tip for anybody visiting West Bengal for Durga Puja is to pre-book flights and accommodation, as it will be difficult to find vacant hotels closer to the date. But visitors can hire a rental car walk around on foot. I would urge visitors to participate in the Dur Nitra dance before to impress the goddess or in the Sindor Kela where married women smear auspicious vermilion on their head, forehead and on each other to pray for a happy marital life. <clears throat> Tim Cat Festival in e Ethiopia. So every January the largest festival in the underrated country of Ethiopia takes place. The Tim Cat Festival. The Tim Cat Festival celebrates the e Ethiopian Ep Epiphany, the baptism of Jesus Christ. It is a highly important festival to the Ethiopian Orthodox people. During the three-day festival, the baptism is reenacted. Thousands of people dressed in white robes gather for spectacular processions, chanting, dancing, and praying. On the first day, models of the Ark of the Confident Tabots are carried to a body of water. On the second morning, there are many ceremonies and prayers around the body of water involving priests in colorful robes, umbrellas, red carpets, and lots of incense. Finally, after the ceremonies, uh, the church leader blesses the water. The holy water is then sprinkled on the attendants for their annual baptism. The Tim Cat Festival uh, takes place from January 18th. The best places to visit the festival are Addis Abeba, Gondor, and Aksum. However, Tim Cat is celebrated all throughout Ethiopia. I celebrate Tim Cat Festival as Aksum, which I enjoyed as there were not so many other travelers. Please keep in mind that Tim Cat is a highly important event for Ethiopian Orthodox people. And that is not a tourist attraction. Keep your distance. Not disturb the ceremony with photography. The ceremony is free to attend. If you get a chance to participate, Tim Cat Fest will be a highlight of your Ethiopia travels. So next up is Hanel Pixan in Mexico. So there are more than 40 diverse indigenous cultures in Mexico, and many celebrate a day at the beginning of November to honor loved ones who have passed away. Hanel Pixan, Food for the Spirits, is a celebration of the Day of the Dead by the Maya people who live in the Yucatan Pen Peninsula. The Hanel Pixan um, altar always contains the traditional green cross, which the Spanish first introduced as a way to mesh Catholicism and the symbol of Yaksa. I'm saying that so wrong. The Maya secret Sipa, the Baobab tree. The food is similar to Day of the Dead celebrations throughout Mexico, but with a twist. It includes Pip, the huge traditional tamales of Hanel Pixan, Dulce de Papaya, a candied papaya replacing the traditional pumpkin sweet, and tole that is often laced with tropical uh, coconut fruit. At night, victors can take part in the Paseo de Amnes procession in Merida, from the center of town to the cemetery, where thousands of people gather with painted faces and dressed in traditional white clothing. All ages are welcome to visit the numerous altars around the city, honoring the deceased, and to learn about this important holiday. During the week, there are dances, skits, and puppet shows that share the history plus contest for the best pip. Buddha's birthday in Seoul, as South Korea. So, Buddha's birthday is one of those few holidays in the South Korean year where almost everyone gets three days off. The day before, the day of, and the day after is celebrated on the eighth day of the lunar calendar's fourth month. Perhaps the best place to observe and enjoy the festivities is in central Seoul, specifically the Jog Isa Buddhist temple. The religious will pay the statue of the baby Buddha with a ladle of water over his head or donate to the monks. Tourists are free to do either or simply walk around a nicely decorated temple. At night, the focus usually shifts to the Lotus Lantern Parade, one of the biggest spectacles Seoul has to offer. The parade runs along several of Seoul's biggest downtown streets.
streets and always gets extremely crowded. For a lower key event, head to the lantern displays along Shon Ki Yeson Stream. These are all free events open to the public, though some craft making events may have a small fee. Outside of Seoul, virtually every Buddhist temple will celebrate the holiday in some way. The bigger and more well known for the, the temple, the more likely they are to have a large celebration. Mama Negra in Ecuador. Ecuador sits on the right of fire, as volcanoes are a present reminder of the power of the nation. The town of Latacunga sits below the almighty Cotopaxi, a volcano that is still active today. In 1742, Cotopaxi was in a period of high activity and the locals feared for their town. And they pleaded for their lives to the Virgin of Mercy, who is the patron saint of the volcano. Legends say that she was merciful in return to citizens to celebrate her in the Mama Negra festival annually. Additionally, there are two dates for the celebration. The first, the closest weekend to 23rd, 24th of September. And the second coincides with the independence of Lata Kunga on 11th of November. The festival is a mix of traditions featuring African, Spanish, and Mayan influences. During the heavy celebrations, a local dance in the streets, in the street and parade, splayed uh, pig carcasses around the city. These heavy pigs are carried all day before being presented as offerings to the Virgin of Mercy. Whilst it is a celebration that doesn't attract many tourists, locals are very keen to get travelers involved. Alcohol is handed to the crowds, and bystanders are encouraged to take part in the parade. It may be an ish initially daunting spectacle, but it's sure to be celebrated. A celebration you'll never forget. Take a quick sip of water. So the Beehive Fireworks Festival in Yanshu, Taiwan. Um, the Yanshu Firework Festival in southern Taiwan has been called one of the most dangerous festivals in the world. Once a year, the sleepy countryside village lights up with a two-day procession that involves hundreds of thousands of bottle rockets being shot not up into the air, but directly into crowds of participants at close range. That does sound dangerous. Locals travel from across the country in hopes of getting hit by one, which is considered good luck in Taiwanese culture. Wouldn't that be dangerous, though? The festival dates back to the late 19th century when a cholera epidemic swept through the region. Local villagers paraded a statue of Guan Yu, the war god, through the neighborhood, setting off firecrackers to ward off evil spirits, uh, causing the disease. It seemed to have worked, and an annual tradition was born. But over time, they began shooting the firecrackers and rockets in multiple directions at once, from their platforms resembling beehives, hence the name of the festival. Anybody is welcome to join, but participants must wear, wear full body protection, including a helmet. As my father and I learned, we took part in the event. Once the bottle rockets start going off, you have to hop up and down to avoid rocks getting stuck when they strike you and lighting your clothing on fire. This happened to us a few times. Wow. So, Lucia in Sweden. So, if you happen to be in Sweden in the middle of December, this is a must. Lucia, celebrated on the 13th of December, is one of the Sweden's most popular Christmas traditions. The reason as to why it's celebrated isn't completely clear, clear even to the Swedes. St. Lucia's feast day on the is on the 13th of December, and this day uh, was also known as the darkest night in Sweden, according to the old Almanac. Maybe this is the reason behind this beloved tradition. The Lucia celebration usually takes place in churches, a procession takes place involving a girl with a wreath of uh, candles in her hair, followed by an entourage of girls with candles in their hands and boys that hold a star on a stick. Everyone is dressed in white gowns and sings Christmas songs for the audience. The Lucia entourage usually performs rather early in the morning. Every time I'm back home in Sweden for Christmas, I make sure to go and watch Lucia. I've always thought of it as a very beautiful and cozy tradition. As a tourist, there are different ways to join the celebration. The easiest will be to contact a church directly, but you can also ask at your hotel or closest visitor information center. Lucia has celebrated all over the country, and if you're a visitor in a bigger city, you most likely have plenty of options to choose between. Talk bat in Lawn, uh, Branban, Laos. Um, morning almsgiving, also known as Tak Bat, is one of the most controversial tourist attractions in um, Leo, Branban, Laos. Is a ceremony where monks collect their fruit for the day from the public as soon as the sun rises. It has been a concern for the authorities in Lan Praban in recent years due to disrespectful behavior by some tourists. The ceremony has been around since the 1600s and is considered holy by the locals. So, if you're planning a visit to 
on for bat or any firefly host to observe tech bat. Make sure you know the rules. Watch the ceremony from a distance so they don't disturb participants. Never use your flash while photographing and remain silent throughout the ceremony. If you want to join the alms given ceremony, make sure you consult your hostel manager or locals first. So Yi Ben Lo Kraton in northern Thailand. Yi Ben or Yi Ben um, is a Buddhist festival primarily celebrated in northern Thailand that features a ritual of releasing paper lanterns called Kom Lo. Wait. Buddhists believe that the act of releasing a lantern through the full moon frees them up and uh, look from the past year. This is similar, it looks like what happened in one of the, to all the boys we loved before. Like their first real date, they did this. And um, Peter was like, we don't have to wish for that, like we already have that, you know. Um, I don't know, but their hair mom was from Korea, is it? Wait, oh, never mind. But, um, Chan, Chan Mai, the former capital of the Lana Kingdom, hosts the largest Yi Pen Lantern Festival in Thailand. Because the festival is based uh, on the Thai lunar calendar, the exact dates of the Lantern Festival shift every year, but it typically falls around the full moon in November. As you observe the festival, it's important to bear in mind that while the ceremonies are very beautiful, it's a significant religious festival for Buddhists. Dora should dress appropriately, keep their voices down, and try not to uh, obstruct people from releasing their lanterns. Additionally, the volume of inorganic trash generated from Yiban is significant. The lanterns are mostly made of rice paper with um, a bamboo or wood frame and wire to the candle or fellow coil. The vast majority of lanterns end up on the ground, in trees, and the river after the festival. Okay, so you may want to consider sticking to observing the religious ceremony rather than releasing your own lantern. Especially if you're not a Buddhist, if you want to observe the Yi Ben Lantern Festival in Chiang Mai, head to No or at Bridge No on the Ping uh, River towards the south. The best place to observe the Chiang Mai Lantern Festival is at Wat Chai Bon Kon, where monks help devotees and tourists release lanterns safely, or Wat Vadao in the Old Town. Note that monks no longer release lanterns within the Old Town and see light them and hold onto float lanterns using wire. So, a fashion in Germany. If you plan on traveling to Germany around January, February, be sure to check out uh, a fashion parade. These parades take place the week before Ash Wednesday and in the night of Shrode Tuesday. Fashion, also known as Carnival, is an entire week of festivities and parties, ending with a huge parade of mass creatures, floats, bands, and a bit of chakra. Its history dates back to pagan times, when it's a way of driving off the evils of winter and encouraging spring to arrive with plentiful crops. It's also associated with the festivals of the Christian church, where everyone would lose a bit before Lent arrived. Uh, fashion is a child would less lose a bit before Lent arrived. Fashion is a child-friendly event, although some of the masks can be a bit scary. Parade participants throw out candy along the way. If you have to you should be wary, because it might get scooped up for a bit of fun, like carting them off, tying their shoes together, or spinning them around. Each town and city has its own traditions to make the event much more unique. Festival of San Martino in Davino, Italy. The Festival de San Martino, St. Martin's of Tours, takes place on November 11th in Davino, a tiny town in Buglia, uh, located in the heel of Italy's boot. So the festival coincides with the Vino Novello. Is it Vino Novello? I'm not sure if it's like Vasco P, like Spanish, but yeah, in Spanish, and new wine of the season. Harvest much like other autumn festivals and towns throughout Italy's wine producing regions. In Tavino, the festival of San Martino, recognized the patron saint of winemaking, horsemen and horses, beggars, the poor and injured. Images of the beloved saint often depict him on horseback, sharing his cloak with the beggar. As legends say, he cut his cloak in pieces in order to protect the man from the cold. In Tavino, the feast of San Martino begins in the early evening on St. Martin's Eve. On November the 10th, when lights strung throughout Davino's old town are illuminated in a spectacular sound and light show. The hub of the festivities in the 
Piazza San Martino, a plaza dominated by a Baroque church built in 1635. The statue of San Martino was taken from its position within the church and hoisted on the shoulders of devotees at the head of a procession led by priests and dignitaries. Uh, dignitaries um, brass bands parade throughout the cobblestones streets while residents and anyone else who wants to participate join in. The festival is a mix of carnival and Thanksgiving with feasting on seafood, regional dishes and wines of the Salentino region of Buica along with the much revelry throughout the narrow winding streets, bars, cafes and restaurants. So Bonfire Night in the UK. So Bonfire Night is one of the UK's more curious festivals. What's become big night out to watch spectacular fireworks displayed traditionally accompanied by a huge bonfire has some rather ominous roots. Remember, remember, the 5th of November is a popular saying associated with the festival. But why should you remember the 5th of November? Why do you have fireworks on this date? Because the 5th of November is the date the famous gunpowder plot when Guy Fox and his accomplices plan to blow up London's House of Parliament and then monarch King James I was boiled. The plot never came to pass. Their treason was discovered. Each of the plotters met a grisly end. Fox famously on a drawn and quartered of the centuries was started as a reckless celebration of the downfall of the plotters as turned into the family friendly event that we see today. As the place where the plot originally happened, I think seeing the fireworks should be at the top of your London bucket list. The city is full of places to watch the fireworks. Some displays like those on Blackheath Common are free. Others like those at Battersea Park you have to pay for. It's worth checking out and getting to your chosen destination early as they do fill up. Shinbu ceremonies in Myanmar, Burma. So as I stood on the side of the road in a village somewhere near Bagan, I sent something significant was happening. The sound of drums was approaching in the distance beyond the large ornate gate painted in red and gold. The procession was led by young women dressed in vibrantly colored dresses, spreading lotus flowers, and then I caught my breath as a young boy dressed like royalty came to the gate in a gold horse drawn carriage. There was never ending line of these young boys parading through the village. Some were resting on golden chairs atop the horses, and others were opulent carriages drawn by all different sorts of animals. This was a Shinbu ceremony where young boys are presented to a local monastery to become novice monks. This coming of age ceremony is part of the Ter Theravada Buddhist tradition believed to bring good fortune to fa a family. It's a was significant to Burmese culture. The procession leads them to the monastery where the boys endure the ceremonious shaving of the head and trading their silk robes for saffron colored ones. After family and their sons part ways, often for the first time in the boy's life, the village hall is a celebration. This includes a shared meal, dancing, and other performances. I don't expect you, as I was watching the procession, members of the village invited me to share with their meal. It was an honor to be welcomed into this special celebration. There's now a set date to experience Shinbu, as a, each local monastery selects a day for the New Year festival period. is a common time for these traditions to take place. The day of the New Year festival varies as it based on the Burmese calendar, but usually falls in mid-April. I think that's actually the end of uh, this article, and because we're coming to the end of the video, we might stop a bit early, but yeah, that's the end for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy, please make sure to let me know so I'll know to do a part two. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be seeing you in the next one, so bye for now.